Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. I've already touched on this briefly in other videos, but I think I could go into more detail as it's pretty major. Now, before you die of despair and think that that five figure Tesla stock price won't be a thing if robo taxis aren't in the US, then relax, this is good news. For starters, I want to be clear, I'm referring to the dedicated robo taxi. I don't think that will ever be out in the US. At least if it ever is, it won't be for a long time. My theory is that for Tesla to make the most impact on their mission, then the robo taxi business must be designed to reduce as much CO2 emission as possible. Therefore, it would need to replace as much of the driving as possible and as many cars as possible. I can only think of two ways of achieving this. One is to drive the robo taxi that much faster, which might be a possibility with boring tunnels, resulting in more trips within the same space of time. The other, well, it's very simple. You just use carpooling. The more people in the taxi at once, the fewer vehicles are required on the road. Vehicles in developing nations, well, they don't have as high emission standards as somewhere like Germany, for instance. They simply can't afford these types of vehicles or the regulation costs involved. Transport needs to happen any way possible in these nations, even if it's significantly more expensive in the long term and creates pollution. A city still needs to run. Poor nations can't always make the huge investments required for updating infrastructure. As a result, these vehicles emit much more pollution and CO2 than say a modern Mercedes or even a GM car. Now, why would Tesla want to replace modern Mercedes vehicles or even hybrids with EVs that they can be replacing decades old vehicles with black smoke coming out of their exhausts? It's so obvious. It's so obvious in fact that if Tesla don't follow this path, it would actually concern me as a shareholder as Tesla are not fulfilling their mission like they stated. It makes so much more sense than replacing highly polluting vehicles with EVs rather than modern highly regulated emission vehicles. Yeah, sure, but that's the issue in the first place, isn't it? Consumers in these nations can't afford a new luxurious EV or even a new low emissions ICE vehicle. However, in these nations, they care less about personal space and are willing to pull or share a robo taxi with other fellow commuters. The robo taxis would offer luxuries like comfortable seating, air conditioning, a TV to watch, and obviously be much safer. But all of this for less than the cost of taking a smelly old bus, and it may actually pick you up and drop you off at your destination, perhaps as many as 10 commuters in such a taxi, each giving up their dirty old polluting modes of transport, reducing emissions, and fewer vehicles on the road. But eventually you hit a virtuous circle. The more cars you remove from the road, replacing with robo taxis, then the less congestion there will be, which means the traffic can move faster, which means robo taxis are able to do even more work, replacing even more cars. They're more similar tipping points within the EV industry. Eventually we reach more abundance as more economies of scale come into place. This is really going to be a robo bus, isn't it? And likely not too dissimilar to the one we've seen before, ample seating available to cater as many people in as efficiently as possible. The entire length of the taxi can be used for seating. Obviously no engine in the front, but no frunk either. The battery would be the structure and the motors can likely be under the seating. In other words, a large volume to area ratio when compared to an ICE minibus. The less area the taxi takes up, the more positive effect it will have on congestion, what with being a smaller vehicle, and the higher volume will allow for higher occupancy per squared foot. This may result in compromising drag coefficiently slightly. As these are robo buses, I think it would make most sense keeping them within the city limits and no long distance driving out of the city as it would reduce the average number of passengers available in further commutes to less sought after destinations. It would be much more efficient serving the denser population and will have the most impact there first, the 80-20 rule. With less long distance driving and being stuck in traffic in the city for most of the driving, then the taxis likely won't cover that many miles in a day of taxiing. So the battery should easily last a full day before needing to charge. We've mainly thought the robot taxis would most likely be using LFP cells due to the additional lifetime of the cells. But for those of you who recall, before battery day, the million mile battery was a big deal and was one of the main expectations from battery day. It's still assumed by many that the 4680s will be capable of a million mile battery, but we don't have confirmation nor charging speeds. But anyway, if Tesla are setting up in Indonesia for the nickel, then these robot taxis will likely be 4680 cells. This would mean that Tesla are able to get more range from their taxis compared to LFP. Now, I have been a strong advocate of LFP as I think it is an essential cell type for the transition of renewable energy. And many of you know that I've been talking about it for a long time, but I think it's getting blown out of proportion somewhat. Tesla can produce 4680 cells faster and cheaper than LFP, for example, and nickel cells are more profitable as consumers really do see value in a longer range vehicle and are willing to pay extra for it. 
Having said that, if robotaxis do become as big as we are speculating here, then it may very well make sense to set up a recycling facility here too, perhaps redwood materials. Now, with about 25 million people commuting around the city each day, well, that's a lot of potential fares. About half of these people are driving scooters, and about a third of the remaining are likely driving old polluting cars. But a total of a third do currently use public transport. Therefore, there should be plenty of demand from people in scooters or riding around in non-aircon transport in the tropics that would be willing to pay more for a Tesla robotaxi luxury. Except that's how amazing Tesla is. You get a lot more for less. Robotaxis will cost less than buses. Just like how when you buy a Tesla car, it costs less than the equivalent BMW or Mercedes, yet has better performance and more features as standard. Of course, it has a significantly lower running cost too. All these nations tend to have bad congestion and bad pollution. They're all crying out for Tesla robotaxis. Is this really such an issue in the US? All right, sure, some cities are pretty bad, but I don't think on the same scale. But I'm not sure Americans will be so willing to pull in taxis to rectify the situation anyway. Perhaps the robotaxi will be more like a bus, so less personal, but not sure. I know this may be jumping the gun a little, perhaps a bit too early to think about. Self-driving cars in developing nations with poor roads and bad adherence to traffic laws. But we're talking about trillions of dollars of potential here. More profit than any company may have ever seen, and possibly just from Indonesia alone. So when you point out potential issues, remember to think, what if a trillion dollars was thrown at it? Yeah, things become a lot more possible then. For instance, perhaps it will be hard for various edge cases for robotaxis in Indonesia to begin with. But what if to start with, each robotaxi had a person in the taxi as a controller, or perhaps from anywhere in the world? If a taxi gets into a situation where it needs some help, then if there is a controller inside the robotaxi, they can perhaps use an app that can direct the robotaxi out of the way, with a feature similar to Summon. Given the lower cost of labour in such nations, this would still be feasible. But like I said, this possibly can be done remotely, from a control centre, and whenever a taxi gets into trouble, the control centre is alerted, and they can manually control and direct the robotaxi. Of course, we would hope over time that the robotaxi can work it out by itself and needs less assistance. The point is that there are ways around getting earlier adoption. But what about the US? Tesla has so much data about drivers there, it's likely robotaxis may not have much trouble being approved in many states too. Surely it just makes more sense to start robotaxis in the US. Remember, I have never said there will not be robotaxis in the US. I'm saying that I don't think the dedicated robotaxi is for the US market, at least not to start with, due to the fact that 80% of fares will be single passenger, and the ones with multiple passengers are likely all in the same party. Pooling won't work as well, so it's wasteful sending out a robobus for one person. Therefore, I think developed nations will stay the path we initially thought, Tesla owners adding their Teslas into the robotaxi fleet which may happen as early as next year too. All right, I know there is a big divide between robotaxi believers and non-believers. Some people think they're being realistic and saying, not until next decade. Others simply refuse the entire possibility. However, of these opinions, none of them ever seem to be AI neural net specialists. These people just try to sound pragmatic, yet still clueless about the tech. I think actions speak louder than words. And Tesla appears to be taking the actions very much so that they believe robotaxis will be achieved within the next couple of years. It just may not be to the level that some people expected, yet to a level high enough that many nations still realize it has massive benefits to their nations that far outweigh any potential downsides, like a robotaxi hitting a road cone. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.